Hey guys, um, I'm here to show you how to diagnose problems with your, your lithium ion battery. Um, if you take a look here, this is our metal case lithium iron phosphate battery. When you're having trouble with this battery, um, let's say the kit's cutting out, the screen won't turn on, um, the trouble is usually going to be with the charger. So the first thing I want to do is check the charger. You can see right now we have both lights on on the charger and it's just plugged into the wall. If you get both lights on when it's just plugged into the wall, then you know that the fuse over here on the AC side is good. You see there's a fuse and a slide out tray here. Let's take a look at that fuse just in case. You can see the tray. You can put a tool in there and flip that out. And so if you had to, you could test that fuse with a multimeter, but we don't need to because the charger will. So we put that back in. So now you can see that it's unplugged, the light is going out. Once the light is out, find the charging port on your battery, which on this battery is on the same side as the plug, and uh, plug the charger into that port. You can see the light comes back on. Now we know that the screw-in fuse is also good. The next thing to check on the charger is the voltage selection. You can see that we have a selectable switch here for European and American voltage. It's on 115 right now. You can see you can slide it back and forth. There's 230. You want it to be all the way on 115. You can see it there. So now we know the charger is doing pretty well. We can check one other thing with the charger. Plug it into the wall. Light comes on. And we set our voltmeter here on DC volts. Uh, in my case, this meter has an auto range, so I don't need to actually set the range. If you did need to set the range, you would put it probably on 20 or 200 range, depending. Now we can hook our meter up, and uh, it's really easy to short out an RCA plug. So you very carefully hold the, uh, the middle pin on red and the outer pin on black, and you can see that I'm getting sort of a fluctuating voltage, whoops, and see I shorted it out there. That's what you want to be careful about. Don't want to do that. That'll pop your fuses really quick. But you can see it's on 57 volts a lot of the time. It's very hard to hold this on steady. The other thing with the charger is the fan. You want to see the fan come on. If the fan doesn't run, then it's not in fast charging mode. So I plug this in now. You can hear the fan going quietly. You can feel it. And now you know it's in fast charging mode. If the fan's running and you're getting 57 volts a lot of the time, everything is good with that charger. Next thing we can do is check the battery. So in the battery, we want to get the voltage. And you need long probes on your meter for this. Check the battery voltage. And again, it's hard to get these quite in place. You can see it fluctuating as I'm not making a good, good, good connection. And part of the problem is the key is not in. This is also an important step. It's not going to produce power unless it's on. So now I turn it on and now there we go, I'm getting 53 volts. So this is a 48 volt battery, and you'll notice that uh, you know we're reading about four volts high. That's a good sign. If I was getting exactly 48 volts, then this battery is pretty much 95% depleted. So if you're reading 48 volts, your battery is totally flat, hasn't been charged in a long time. If you're reading 53 volts or a little higher, then your battery is just about fully charged, and that's good. Next thing we can do to check the charger is to plug the charger in while we're reading the voltage here. So we see 52.9, we plug the charger in, wait for the fan to come on. Fan's not coming on, LED1, LED2. So we can see that the charger thinks that the battery is fully charged. And that's probably about right with this battery actually. But uh, one thing we can do is shut the charger down. Since it goes through a multi-stage charging process, since I just had it plugged in a minute ago and then I unplugged it, 
it might think that the battery stopped accepting a charge. This is one thing that'll happen if you have somebody who's uh, got the charger plugged into the wall all the time. It can get confused like that. So now I plug it in, and now the fan's on, see? So we managed to reset the charger. It thought, since it lost connection to the battery, that the battery was fully charged. And now you see the voltage has gone up from 52.9 to 53.5. So we can see the voltage is climbing. It's gone up uh, six tenths of a volt, which is significant with a battery like this. There we go, there's another tenth. And the fan's running, and both lights are red now. We don't have a green light. So this is going to continue to climb slowly. There we go, 53.7. And uh, eventually, the fan will shut off, the light will turn green, the voltage will probably be around 54 or so. So, we know that the charger's doing well, we know that this is doing well. If we had a problem on either end, we would have replaced that fuse. There's one other thing to check. So let's say that the charger was not charging. Let's say that when we connect the charger, to the battery, we did not actually get that light. So let's say that light does not come on. So the battery is not charging. Battery seems okay otherwise, but it's really just not, not doing what we expect. So if I take this fuse out, let the light go out, and then I plug this into the charger, notice the light doesn't come on. In our case, it's because this fuse isn't here. But let's say the fuse was installed. We've got the fuse in, the light's not coming on. There's two possibilities. The fuse in this cable could be bad, or the fuse in the battery for the charging port could be bad. There's two fuses. There's one for the bike inside this end cap, and one for the charger inside this end cap. On batteries that have the charging port under the handle, the fuse for the charger will be on that end, where the charging port is. So, light's not coming on, fuse is in, we take the fuse off, let's put our multimeter on resistance, you can see we're measuring an open line, and now we just connect our leads to either end of the fuse, and uh, it's still reading open line, so that's telling us that this fuse is no good. But, if it drops to zero or very low resistance like you see there, that means the fuse is good. The fuse is working, it's passing a uh, lot of current, no problem at all, good, good solid connection with low resistance. You can't check these fuses by just looking at them. Traditionally, you'll look at a fuse, you'll see if it looks like it's burnt up or the wire's cut. These fuses will not always show. You have to check it with a multimeter or with the charger. So, let's say the fuse is good, or we replace the fuse, we reinstall it, we hook up our charger, still no light. We know this fuse is good, we know this is hooked up, we have no light. That means that the problem is with the fuse in the battery or with your connection here, you know, maybe the wire is damaged, something like that. So I'm going to just reinstall this for us. And uh, what we'll want to do is now open up the battery very carefully. Take a screwdriver, uh, pretty high torque for loosening it. But when you reinstall, these are stainless screws in aluminum. You need to turn the torque way down or you'll strip them out. Anyway, like I was saying, this is the last step. If this fuse is popped, it's probably going to be because something shorted out the plug, something like that. Most of the time, your charger is going to be the problem. So now we carefully open this up. You can see that we have an inline fuse holder. This is an automotive style fuse. You should be able to get it at, uh, at AutoZone, Home Depot, that kind of place. See, this is a bladed fuse. It's gonna be really hard to pull out of the holder. A pair of pliers is pretty much necessary. To get this bladed fuse out, this is a 5 amp, I believe. It'll be written on there. Um, yep, see there's a little 5 on the end. You should replace it with a 5 amp fuse. Um, don't, don't put a higher rated fuse in whenever you're replacing one. So you notice here we have open line, but let's say, um, 
let's say we, we have an open line reading on this fuse. Now we know why the charger light was not coming on. Because this is popped, so the charger can't connect to the battery. So that means we need to replace this fuse. So let's say we replace it, we test the new fuse, zero ohms resistance. We know this fuse is good. We install it in the holder. And again, you gotta make sure you push this in all the way. The holders are pretty tight. Line up the blades, push it in, close the cap. And now we're very careful with the wires here. Tuck the wires in carefully to make sure that they're not hitting anything where they're going to be damaged. Hold the cap on. Turn your torque down low so you don't strip the bosses for the screws. And now you can put this back together. And at this point, you want to make sure that you put it on the right way up. At this point, your battery should probably start charging. And um, again, problems with your battery are going to be problems with the battery charging. Uh, these are very reliable batteries. So check your cables, check your fuses, check the switch, and um, that's going to resolve your problem 99% of the time. If you have any questions, feel free to call us up. Thank you.